From creatures slumbering beneath the ice to odd encounters on dark roads at night and tragic historical events, today we share our top 10 list of horrifying stories from Native American reserves. I'd like to note that due to the historical erasure of many storytelling communities, there's not too much information out there and we may not always have access to traditional wisdom surrounding these stories, so please let us know. But get ready because what I did find will give you nightmares. Starting off at number 10, we have Uktena, a massive serpent born of envy and anger with massive Massive wings and horns. This story originates with the Cherokee tribe, and according to a journal entry by 19th century anthropologist James Mooney, who spent time with the Cherokee people, quote, the Uctena is a great snake as large around as a tree trunk with horns on its head and a bright blazing crest like diamond on its forehead. Apparently, the diamond is the ultimate prize for every warrior, but if you gaze into it, you will be transfixed and drawn towards the monster instead of away. Legend has it the Uctena lives in isolated dark places like gorges, caves, and high mountains. So if you do hear something slithering up behind you, you shield your eyes and run, unless you think the diamond is worth it. Coming in at number nine, we have the legend of the Kenon Setontes. Sign out, googled like mad and couldn't find out the pronunciation, so I welcome correction, please. These creepy creatures belong to the Iroquois Confederacy, and what are they? Flying disembodied head with blazing fiery eyes is in long knotted hair. Despite their lack of bodies, they seem to have a ravenous hunger for human flesh. We can't quite be sure what the exact origins are of this story, but some of the legends say that these heads were brought to life after a violent death in order to exact revenge on their killers. More specifically, the heads actually belong to the elders of a tribe that existed near the Secunda Lake. When due to famine, members of the tribe decapitated their elders when they refused to allow them to move towards more sources of food. The heads merged and became one massive demon head with wings and it killed the whole tribe. Coming in at number eight, this story is one of the more famous ones and belongs to the spiritual tradition of the Algonquin First Nations. This creature is so terrifying that you can only say its name when there is snow on the ground, which surprisingly there is today, so that's good. The Wendigo is a powerful monster whose desire to consume and devour flesh knows no bounds. According to most lore, the beast originates as a man who transforms into the creature when they succumb to their greed and weaknesses. They also have the ability to infect other people and whole communities with evil. Some describe them as an emaciated form with skin stretched over their thin bones, while others describe it as a being so large due to its all-consuming power. They are also said to have superhuman strength, heightened senses, and can walk across deep snow and water without sinking. What's even creepier is that there are stories relating to the Wendigo scattered across history. History. Take this Jesuit document found in 1661, for example, which recounts the mysterious death of men who were seized with an ailment unknown to us. Afflicted with neither lunacy, hypochondria, nor frenzy, but have a combination of all these species of disease, which affects their imaginations and causes them a more than canine hunger, makes them so ravenous for human flesh that they pounce on women, children, and even upon men. That's an actual quote. That's pretty creepy. Coming in at number seven, we have skinwalkers. One of the creepiest Navajo legends is the one about the skinwalkers, or the Yanaldushi. A skinwalker is a kind of witch that can take form of a coyote and live in caves where they store recognizable human heads so they can transform into them. They can cause sickness and practice a wide variety of dark deeds, which explains why you should be very very afraid if one is after you. In an article written by Sean Reveron, he recounts the story his friend told him when he visited his grandmother who always kept her curtains drawn. Her only explanation was that the Yendaloshi was watching her. The family dismissed it until one day his grandmother and his little brother were outside and she started shouting, get away from that creature, it's not safe. The rest of the family rounded the corner to see a massive dog staring at the little boy and the grandmother with a deep, dark intensity. The dog looked at the family briefly, huffed and then walked away, but its eyes, its eyes were a deep set of unnatural yellow. And what's more chilling is that this grandmother said next, the Yendaloshi has found me. She moved a few weeks later. Coming in at number six, we have the Kualupalik. This next one will send literal chills down your spine as it involves a terrifying creature that resides beneath the ice. The Kualupalik is a half-human, half-sea creature based in Inuit lore that usually is found in the icy waters of Alaska and Northern Canada. They have long hair, elongated fingernails, and slimy skin, and are known for dragging curious victims down to their icy cave. Usually, they consume the young in order to stay youthful forever, stealing your youth away 
away. It is said that you hear a gentle tapping beneath the ice. You should stay away. That is the Kualupali calling for you. Personally, I love swimming in freshwater lakes and rivers. I'd take that over the ocean any day. I don't know. That's just, that's just where I, how I was raised. But after hearing this story, I may hesitate before I leap into any Great Lakes. Next up at number five, we have Mishi Peshus. Mishi Peshus are the central water figure for the Ojibwe nation, a great dragon-like creature that resembles a feline with horns. It is said to live in the deepest parts of the Great Lakes. It's kind of like Nessie in the Loch Ness, and it's covered in scales with great large paws to help it swim at supernatural speeds. It is both feared and respected by the Ojibwe as the Mishi Peshus are said to be responsible for large waves, rapids, whirlpools, and breaks in the ice in winter. Some are even known to change their appearance into dense fog or sudden strong winds. This creature is also affiliated with the Algonquin, Ottawa, Menominee, Shawnee, and Cree tribes. But they aren't the only ones who believe in them. There are government signs set up warning of their whereabouts near Great Lakes. Check out this picture. This next story is super creepy and we're coming in at number four. Sometimes there is nothing more freeing than taking a long, beautiful drive at night unless you're Edwin Mata and his father driving through the Navajo Reserve. Coming in at number four, we have one of the most terrifying night drives ever. When Edwin was young, he and his father were driving home back to Window Rock, Arizona when suddenly his father stopped talking, told him not to look out the window, and started speeding down the road. But, of course, curiosity got the better of him, and though at first he saw nothing, suddenly there was a pair of glowing red eyes that caught his attention in the rearview mirror. The eyes got closer and closer, then disappeared a moment before an animal of some kind leapt out in front of their truck. Luckily, his father gained back control, but Mata will never forget what he saw. A creature like a coyote, but larger with matted fur, and even stranger, it was wearing clothes, torn jeans, and a black t-shirt. When they got home, they locked the doors, and to this day, Mata and his father have never spoken about it. But Edwin still hesitates to drive at night on the reservation. Could it have been a skinwalker, the ones that we talked about? Who knows? Coming in at number three, this next story was shared by Lakota journalist Tom Diego and also comes from Pine Ridge Reservation, specifically the Holy Rosary Mission School, now known as Red Cloud. This place was definitely haunted, from organs playing by themselves at night to waking up to headless nuns at the end of their beds. One reason for so many terrifying occurrences could be that the devil is in the graveyard. Tom recounts the story of a Jesuit priest awaking one night to see a glowing fire in the graveyard. When he went to investigate, they discovered the image of the devil glowing brightly on one of the tombstones. Once the fire was put out, they tried to chisel the image of the devil off of the stone, but to this day, the tips of the horns are still visible. How creepy is that? You know those moments when you see something at the corner of your eye and you're sure you saw it, but when you go to look, there's nothing there? This next story was shared by Kiowa writer Robert Chinate and comes from the Pine Ridge Reservation also. One really hot day in August, Robert was placing offerings on his mother's front porch and had just returned to the east side of the house to return materials to the earth. But then, Robert caught movement in the yellowed grass field at the corner of his eye. The grass was high, and as he turned to look, he saw a man in black clothing with long hair hanging in his face because he was leaning forward, walking south through the field. The grass was high enough that he couldn't see the man's feet, but he turned away for a moment to return to his work, but when he looked back up, of course, the man wasn't there anymore. He rushed the field to reassure the man that he didn't mean to scare him, to bring him out of hiding, but there was absolutely no sign of him. Coming in at number one, by now you've probably guessed that Pine Ridge is a troubled place, but we can't talk about these stories without first landing at our number one spot with why it is. One of the most horrific stories surrounding this indigenous reservation is the Pine Ridge Massacre at Wounded Knee. On December 29th, 1890, the US 7th Cavalry Regiment were escorting 300 150 Lakota people who had surrendered to a camp where they would wait until they would be transferred to Pine Ridge Indian Agency the following day. They were then forced to give up their defenses and when some of the tribe resisted, this sparked the 7th to open fire, killing 200 unarmed Lakota people. Considering what happened, it's no surprise that such an abhorrent moment in history sparked paranormal activity literally everywhere and has resulted in many of the stories that you've heard above. And that is our top 10 list of horrifying stories from Native American reserves. If you liked this video, press that thumbs up button and subscribe for more. Let us know in the comments stories you think we might have missed and details maybe we didn't find. Again, there's still so much that was lost for these communities and we'd love to hear from you to help carry on the tradition of storytelling. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher, and until next time, take care.
Coming in at number nine, we have the legend of the... Oh, okay, this one's bad, guys. Keno... Canon Sitonis. Canon Sitonis. Canon Sitonis. Tontis. Since then, people tell numerous ghost stories about spirits and nuts. Don't, can't, 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 don't use that because I don't even know what I was saying. As a result, it's no surprise that such abhorrent. Oh my god, I can't. Words. 